All right. So then we are calling the meter to, meeting to order, are we? At 6.33 p.m. Hi. Hey. Hi. Hi. Um, all right. So we have but two things um, pressing. They include making a decision as to whether or not we want to establish a committee. John, do we have to first pass like motion to adopt? It? Oh yeah, you know. You so do we not have to? I don't know because it's recorded. I'm not into Robert's rules. <laughs> I don't know. If, you know, okay, for so posterity, if this matters. Okay, so we call them. I'm calling the meeting to order. Uh, do we have a motion to adopt the agenda? I so move. Thank so you. Okay, beautiful. And then. Um, you did minutes. I did minutes. Where yeah. are they? They're not here. Then. Oh, I. She threw them out. Don't got them either, honestly. No, she. Well, she, I guess we can't meet. She them. threw them out. She did it on purpose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was looking for them, but obviously it's a funny story because I've been telling people this all day. I can't go through my emails because the server has a little bit of storage and I have to delete everything <laughs> to keep sending out mail or getting them. What uh, server? What's like? Is there like a server that the Manhattan Borough Presence office. No, like the server in the office. Oh, oh wow. If that was if that was small, I would be like well, that's small, but yeah, our server so small. If you want to send it to me, I could print it again. Well, all right. Uh, well you, you, if we, you want to send it to we me? will forward them to you, but for the mean for the moment, and in the meantime, there are no minutes. So um we will proceed. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, and we've uh, Daniel Keen joining us. Hello, Daniel. We saw you. And there he went. Hello. He Hello. He said. Hi. Uh, all right. Well, this is um, the Community Board Nine Same Gender Loving LGBTQ Task Force meeting. Uh, this Tuesday, November 28th, in the year of our Lord, 2023, where we will determine whether or not we seek to establish a committee um, for the commissioning of a monument to Audrey Lord. Thoughts? So, uh, meeting before last, we had a, a fine presentation uh, with John Riddy, preservation historian John Riddy, about the intricacies involved in the uh, mission of monument. And uh, so, it's up to us to make a determination as to whether or not we are up to that charge at this juncture. Right. I mean, I think one one takeaway I had from the presentation is that you need a much larger coalition than those of us who are in the room. So I'd expect that, like, if we were to go in this direction, the first step would probably, like, it would probably be a, a long time horizon, I would assume. Like, I assume we would, like, focus for a while, like, on contacting other nonprofits and sort of trying to, like, build that core group before we like before it's sort of being pursued in the race. I'm not sure if that was your interpretation too, but like I, I think that's a really sound assessment, Clayton. You know, I, I think that's something that Mr. Reddick indicated, making sure that were we to proceed, we're already in touch with a community of, of experts and of, of people who, you know, um who Audrey Lord would matter very dearly to in our community, uh, having them engaged in communication. So, you know, I, I think that's that's really important to know um, that this small task force alone, would, based on Mr. Reddick's presentation, um, seems to be not fully as equipped to, to handle 
undertaking the creation of this monument. But if we were to identify a group with the means to participate and, and, and work with us, um, I, I think that that would open up the possibility, I think, in a lot of ways. But, you know, I, I, I'm, I very much appreciated, you know, John Reddick's presentation. Um, I think I went into it expecting that something like this would be an undertaking. And, and I came away from the meeting thinking it, it's so much more complicated than I maybe expected. And um, I, you know, I did really like the idea that I think his name is Richard. Pelzer. Yeah, Richard Pelzer shared about maybe a first step we could take would be like a temporary monument or a temporary, in, you know, um, installation of some kind that would honor Audrey Lord and maybe generate interest, sufficient interest with other community groups um, to maybe proceed to a more substantive next step, like a permanent monument. Makes sense to me. Um, I concur with you both. Um, among my takeaways, uh, included that uh, the word you used was a good one, a coalition. Mm -hmm. um, he, John was proposing that um, beyond um, investment from the community board, um, you want a, a, a diverse um, cadre, at least, of stakeholders, community stakeholders, who are uh, have a fire in their belly about the idea yeah. of yeah, commissioning a monument. Um, and it's a years-long process, right? even once you have organized such a uh, uh, collection, assemblage of community stakeholders, um, it, who include, among others, experts um, and, uh, and people who are have ties to city agencies and, and, and to potential contributors and, and the like, because it's also about a huge um, fundraising um, undertaking initiative. So, yeah, at this juncture, um, it, even with that coalition in place, it's an ambitious undertaking. So, right. yeah, we're, we're out of that. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I think Madison could do it. <laughs> do what? <laughs> I cannot be our, a fundraising fee. <laughs> you, you can be a sculptor. Oh, it's going to be an ugly, ugly sculpture. <laughs> and I, you know, it, it breaks my heart a little bit, you know, because I, I was so excited by the idea at first. And, and as I indicated at previous meetings, I'm. You love one real. Yeah, I do. And, sure. you know, especially mentors of mine. Uh, you know, Audre Lorde's works are so important. The work that I do, uh, Audre Lorde's legacy is, is so important, but, and, and it was honestly a, a, a bit of a exciting surprise that she lived not far from me. So I was so excited by the opportunity, but I think we are maybe a little bit out of our depth, especially when some of the Fundraising figures that we threw around at that meeting with John Reddick <laughs> drew laughter. I, I mean, you just said it again. I saw laughing because, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we said, oh, a few hundred thousand, right? And he said, <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they raised for the Ellison Monument, you know, memorial, like 20 years ago. Right. Okay. And they got it, they knew then that they were getting it on the cheap. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, so you're reminding us, Amir, of 
um, Richard Pelzer's proposal. So I I know I've mentioned to you guys, and, and we are, I, I run this Resiliency Enhancement Network of San General and queer, gay, bisexual, and other gender expansive African descended men called the Gatekeepers for Life, on which board Richard Pelzer sat some years ago when, and, and, and he came up with the brainchild um, for an initiative that we've been uh, pursuing over the last few years that we call Harlem Renaissance 2.0 banners, um, um, commemorating and celebrating the legacies of some of the same gender loving, AKA queer icons who pioneered the Harlem Renaissance in banners on light poles across West Arm and 25th Street. Mm -hmm. Um, the latest iteration of which includes Richmond Barthé, Hall Johnson, um, Alberta Hunter, um, and we're going to do another iteration of those. We're planning on doing another iteration of those uh, in the coming year, which uh, will, because we've done all of the most notable mm -hmm. Um, same gender loving icons of the Harlem Renaissance. While there may well have been others, we don't know their mm -hmm. history well enough to be able to proclaim them as members of the SGL queer elders. So, with the next iteration of banners, Harlem Renaissance 2.0 banners, people will, will be um, same gender loving icons who were members of the successor generation mm -hmm. to who may have been born during the Renaissance, including people like um, James Baldwin, mm -hmm. sure. um, uh, Audrey Lord. Ah, so there. Yeah, we, that's we, great. Yeah. That's, uh, that sounds really exciting. And you know, before we completely table this item on the agenda, maybe we can think about a more achievable way to honor Audre Lorde's legacy that might in turn generate interest in a more permanent uh, way to honor Audre Lorde, like a, like a monument. So maybe we, you know, maybe something like a, a reading, a reading or, or like a, like an interactive cultural event in, in our community, that then could be a launching pad. And maybe, I, you know, I think, you know, planning events in at work, like webinars and these kinds of like educational events, I usually like to give myself more time, but Black History Month is around the corner, could be a good time to, to think about maybe like a reading or another activity where we could really aggressively promote it, get people into a space and, and then talk more about how we can honor Audre Lorde in deeper ways. I'm, I think I'm on a similar page too. Like I would love to see if we can take some of the first steps to make this long-term vision happen while recognizing that like, it's a very long-term thing and what we're trying to do is plant seeds and meet, you know, meet, mm -hmm. meet the people who could form whatever this coalition but end up being and that having those types of cultural events might be good starting. But again, I'm also out of my depth on this on this end. But no, I mean because we're because we're brainstorming. Yeah. So yeah, you know, we're in our depths. We're, 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 we're centered well in our depths already. So yeah, 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 yeah. And furthermore, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Um, so, along those lines, along these lines, uh, what say, you say, a reader, uh, what if we do an event inviting, um, young emerging 
um, queer writers to um, with a with a focus on um, I don't know liberation. Yeah. Um, uh, to do to share their work with yeah. the community under the banner of you know th these are the emerging Audrey Lords, yeah. the Audrey Lords of the next generation, inheriting her legacy. Her legacy. Her legacy. Yeah. yeah, you know maybe we could start with the reading of a work. You know, like an, an you know an essay from Audrey Lord, and then young queer writers in Harlem who who see themselves as 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 kind of standing on Audrey Lord's shoulders to read their own works. I like it. And Colored Negro History Month is a good time. Yeah. yeah. Colored Negro History, Colored Negro African American History Month. Yeah. She's in a way embarrassing and negative. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a great idea. Okay, so um, we need to. Uh, Maybe like I mean, Senator Cordell Claire could publish promote the event. I don't have a relationship with her office the same way I have with Councilmember Abreu, who agreed. I know I'm jumping ahead, so maybe I'll wait. But uh, count, the council member will share our flyer for for the film screening. But I, I don't want to jump ahead in the agenda. Well, that's good because <laughs> based on based on how I'm going to jump ahead. Good, that's good, that's good. Um, I have a relationship with Cordell. We sat on a board together. Um, some years ago, um, and she's yeah. Uh, now is Al Taylor still in office? I think so. I think we get emails from Al Taylor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good, because also have a good relationship with Al Taylor. I've had a good relationship with Gail Brewer. I uh, have a good relationship with Mark Levine. So okay, yeah, we can yeah. we can leverage those relationships to help. Um, publicize once we formalize, once we conceive sure. this event. This is a great idea. I, I'm excited. Good. And well, you should be. I, I, I was all flippancy and joking aside, um, but I decided I'm working on a project that um, core to the onus of which is um, a principle which um, Lord um, advanced. Um, you cannot dismantle the master's house using the master's mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. And I believe that devoutly. And um, it, it, I'm working on a project having to do with um language and identity and self-determination that um core to which is that principle but anyway so we should keep moving yeah all right yes yes we what one quick question is do you, do you have contacts with people who need the young writers presenting out i don't know if that's i have contacts with young playwrights um, prose writers, I may know people who know people. Do you? You know, there's someone I know, I, I went to a really amazing radical poetry reading, made a few friends so many years ago, but some one of whom I'm still in touch with, I could check in with her, and, you know, see if she knows any poets in the area who um, might be interested in reading their work. And, uh, we could also maybe do a host, a, I don't know, a, a contest yeah. might be a little clunky, but outreaching to um, queer organizations, campus organizations, mm -hmm. um, and or lit departments, you know, at area yeah. schools. 
um, advertising that we are hosting an event celebrating uh, the non emergent theater writers, um, particularly of color. Um, or, and, and we need to let's see what, I, what might be an attractive or sexy name mm -hmm. the Audrey Lord um, legacy, something or other. Young Lords. Ah! <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> Felipe Luciano used to be a good buddy of mine, too. <laughs> who yeah, organized the Young Lords back in the day. Well, as, as a, you know, I'm half Puerto Rican, so that's very, that's fucking, that's very cool. Excuse my language. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, oh, in fact, yeah, Felipe might know some young writers. Oh, and also, oh, what am I talking about? Um, um, Abby Odu, uh, also a, 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 a friend and colleague. He has... Yeah, but his young, their young writers are, are tend to be heteronationalist types. Mm -hmm. But they may know some. Heteronationalist? Well, um, well, black nationalists were, um, and pan-Africanists, um, this was back in the day, at the advent of the black power, black consciousness, and black arts movements back in the mid-60s through the 70s. Um, and um, chief among their uh, disposition or orientation were the, or, or, or precepts that they advanced included that uh, homosexuality was an aberration visited upon us by the Europeans as, as a function of colonialism. You know, um, so they didn't recognize yeah. that um, it's part of natural diversity or lack of better framing. Yeah, but it's part of, it's, you know, part of how, yeah, I like that, natural diversity. Right. Yes. So anyway, um, that's why I paused after having thought about Felipe and because, in fact, the last time I've run into, we've run into each other since of good fortune. But the last time we were hanging out and he was bringing his son to my house uh, was Thanksgiving. Was Thanksgiving. Hmm? Several Thanksgivings ago. And, um, and I shared with him that I was saying gender like And that was the last time I heard him. <laughs> He's my brother. You, don't you bother him. You leave him alone. <laughs> um, okay. Um, but we should keep it moving. Sure. <clears throat> uh, all right. So we, where are we with our plan? Our film scheme. Uh, it looked the day where I dropped off. The DVD a few hours ago. Um, we landed on Mofongo. It wasn't too against one because we're with you. We're not against you. We'll never be against you. Um, but ordered 35 um, lunch style plates of the, uh, the was it, peas and rice, pollo guisado. Oh, is it arroz con gandules? Arroz con gandules, oh. pollo guisado, oh, armaduros. Oh, like we just that was delicious. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but I ordered some vegetarian, well, it's not vegan, but it's vegetarian. But it's two. Are you uh, vegan? Uh, vegetarian. Oh, good. I thought you might be vegan. No, okay, I, I keep this for remember. Oh, good. No, then you can have That's how cute. Who? How cute. Is vegan? Oh. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, then why is he so obese? He weighs about 400 pounds, doesn't he? About 4'11 and, and 500 pounds. 
That's me. Okay. Um, so we have a venue. Uh, we booked food. Um, uh, we uh, no beverages. So have two hundred more dollars. How should we? So we have those plates. Do what? What else do we want in terms of refreshments? I assume we, we can't serve alcohol, right? So I assume these would be oh, alcohol. Well, I mean, we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I I don't know if they're losing the venue or something. Mm -hmm. I guess they haven't said anything. Well, about it. now when we were looking at the Skyline Dining Room, they offered, among other options, wine. You know, when we were going to go with mm -hmm. Columbia State. Uh, actually, I don't know. So, yeah, uh, before you were in the forum, they said you can have outside caterers. Uh, I don't, it doesn't occur to me that that would, because we're using outside caterers, that, that, stuff like wine wouldn't be allowed. Maybe if it was hard alcohol, it would be a little different, but if it's like wine, beer, cider, I think it should be fun. Yeah, people, wine and cheese is a, is a... Wine is cheap. I wonder, do you... Well, it depends on what kind of wine you drink. <laughs> cheap wine is cheap. Yeah. <laughs> is it wine is cheap. <laughs> what did you know about wine? Nothing. I only came from college like a year ago. Uh huh. Okay. Right. Well, then why is the bottle the cheap? Right. Okay. All right. All right. There's shots enough to pop for you. <laughs> <laughs> um. So what else do we want in terms of? Do we want wine? We want regular drinks. If we're permitted to, I think that's you know nicer for the event. Yeah. Like you, as you said, John Martin, we're all grown. Sure. <laughs> For weeks now. Is <laughs> <laughs> regular drinks too? Like, yeah, I, I think we should definitely oh, have some, some, some uh, like maybe a couple 12 packs of like Diet Coke or Coke or something and 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 then whatever's remaining for... So who's going to get those and, and lug them to <laughs> the venue? <laughs> well, better to well that it would might simplify matters, but it would probably be less cost effective than something like a BJ's or a Costco's. Yeah, a lot of cars. Nor do I. <laughs> oh well, look like this over here. <laughs> Uh, Unless that order is the office and then somebody come pick it up. Yeah. I think they found an alcohol policy that I'm oh. right now. Yeah. Um, since there's a registration form you to fill out 14 days before. Um, and the form, the form doesn't have a, doesn't have a permit to serve. So you would have to file a one day beer and wine permit application with the liquor authority. Authority. Oh, I have some speeds out. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this first event, I would play dumb, but I don't know. It's it's the, the <laughs> Is there really a community board workaround for that uh, kind of, or do yeah. you know? There is? Really? Oh. Oh right, yeah. Oh, fancy one. Every Thursday, the third Thursday of the month. Yes, yeah, so could we just send an email to Miss Thompson on the Uniform Services Committee? Okay, well, Carolyn, my girl. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's fine. The priest is not gonna have nothing against it because we're the community for it. Like, they're like, no, we object. All right, so then. Uh, we have $200 left. What's our budget for beverages, including wine and sodas? And do we want water? Some tea. Nice. Is it water? I know it's bad, but I don't like water. It's just so like, 
flavorless. <laughs> I like water. It's quite nourishing, no? You don't drink, you don't like when you wake up in the morning. Most you of your body is water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like juice. Like, I do a lot. It's good for you. I Everything you drink that. has water in it, so it's like, I'm basically drinking water. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you you can get away with that for, for some time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, budget? Out of $200? We want to what is one hundred okay for like how many how many bottles of wine do we say like four two liter bottles? Okay, the expensive wine or the cheap wine? Well, somewhere in the middle. We we can't afford expensive wine. Okay. Expensive wine, you're talking about two bottles of wine. Mm. What about box wine? Ugh. But not not a cheap brand, you know. There's there's decent box wines out there. Like, well, there's there's one, you know. I'm thinking, especially in terms of like what might be cost effective, but schlepping it around is not exactly easy. But there's the Whole Foods wine shop on eighty something down there in Columbus, and their prices aren't that bad. I used to work at a wine shop in grad school and learned quite a bit about wine, which is why. I, I knew enough to make the joke about Chateau Neuf de Pop, but <laughs> I, I never heard of that. No, it was it, 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 it's Chateau Neuf. There, it was a chateau. It is their chateaus that the the Pope Pop de Pop. Uh, their the Pope's chateaus that only the Pope would like you know would drink wine from, and oh, really? it's it's a style of uh, you know it's a region of winemaking. Anyway, you can you know it's good wine. I think it's 100% Syrah, if I remember correctly. It, okay. Grad school was a long time ago. Well, but that's okay. You at least studied. 